Welcome to our week two of our June baby shower. Thank you for your patience. Um, we have a really exciting guest for you today. We're really excited to introduce them to you. There are a lot of them. So um, it's not just one. We've got about 14 you're gonna see tonight. So I'm gonna introduce you to Kyla. She's an animal care staff here and she'll be telling you a little bit about the little ones we're going to be meeting today and uh yeah we'll we're gonna go in and meet them pretty quick here so i'll just see if kyla's ready for us um and just a reminder that as you're watching this you can be leaving comments down below leave your questions um and we'll have a time at the end of the video to answer those for you guys and yeah address anything else that you've left in the comments for us so be sure to do that be sure to say hello and uh, let us know where you're watching from because we love to know whether we've got locals here or uh, whether you're watching from afar. So, Kyla, are you ready to go? Yeah. Yeah, awesome. Okay, I'll flip this around and you guys can meet Kyla. Hey everybody, I'm Kyla. I'm one of the wildlife technicians here at Calgary Wildlife. Um, tonight we're going to feed the skunks. We've got a few different age groups here, so they're separated into two rooms just by size. Um, so a few things about skunks before we go in, you're going to see them doing all kinds of weird things. The last thing a skunk wants to do is spray you. Um, it hurts their eyes, their nose, everything as much as it hurts us, and it takes quite a while for them to recharge um, once they use that defense. So you'll see these little guys stamping their feet. Um, You'll see them bending in half. You'll see them showing their bums. Um, they sometimes make little vocalizations. So when I'm going in there, they're all just telling me to get lost. Um, and then afterwards, I can talk a little bit more about how skunks are great for our environment and the kind of food that I'm going to give them and things like that. So if you want to go, go on in.
can see they're a hungry bunch. Um, normally they do spread out a little bit more. We try and give them um, one dish per animal just to avoid any kind of food aggression, things like that. So what you saw them getting in there was some canned cat food. Um, the little guys, uh, we start them with the canned cat food and progress them to moistened and crunchy kibbles. Um, so they got a mix of peas and corn, um, some yam and some carrot. Uh, there were some mixed berries in there. Um, hard boiled egg, which is a favorite. Um, so you might have noticed a bunch of them took little pieces and would run away from the dish with them. Um, that's part of their uh, that's just getting the good stuff, so to speak. Um, and then, of course, they get lots of water and things like that. Um, so skunks are what are called crepuscule. Sorry, I might have mispronounced that. Um, but that means they're active at twilight. Um, so they're not like animals that are nocturnal. Uh, they're not very often up during the night. They're, at, they're at, often active at twilight. When the babies are first born, um, they stay in the den for about a month before they come out. and um, before, once they come out, you will see baby skunks um, in the yard or in the park during the day because they go out exploring um, while mom and dad are having a nap. Uh, it's just a good way for them to start hunting and figuring out how to survive in their environment. But they will go back to the den at night um, with mom. Dad doesn't help very much. Um, so then there's a couple of things about skunks um, in terms of our ecosystem. They're a huge benefit to our ecosystem. People don't realize that, um, but they're the best pest control you can have. Uh, they take care of mice and voles, um, little weasels sometimes. Weasels are pretty fierce. Um, they're from the same family as weasels, um, but they also will, in for gardens and things like that, they take care of wasps and hornets because their skin is so thick and their fur is so thick that they don't actually, aren't bothered by the stings. So they will eat um, wasps and hornets, sometimes bees, um, but they also eat beetles that destroy gardens. They destroy, um, they eat like ants and aphids and all kinds of things that go into your garden and your yard um, and destroy things. So without our skunks out there helping us out in our environment, um, we, would, we would be overrun by rodents is my guess. Um, so uh, they're really, really important and the best um, thing that we can do is just try and coexist. So we coexist as best we can. We let them do their thing. Like I mentioned earlier, they do not want to spray. That is the last thing they want to do. Um, they can spray five to six times before they completely deplete um, their, their resource, but then it takes them up to two weeks to recharge, sometimes longer. Um, so they're without that major defense. So it's very, very a last resort for them. Um, predators that they have, um, you know, fox and wolf, things like that uh, will go after them. But um, canids like fox and wolf um, have very strong sense of smell. So they prefer not to go after skunks. Um, their biggest predator in the wild is actually a great horned owl. And that's because great horned owls have very, very poor sense of smell. So they have, uh, it doesn't bother them um, to, uh, to go near skunks or around skunks. Um, skunks will also feed on, carry on things that are left by other predators. Um, but in order to coexist with them here in the city, you need to just make sure um, cleaning up under bird feeders because um, they will come and eat those seeds. If you feed a pet outside, just make sure you're not leaving food outside overnight. Obviously secure garbage and um, compost piles, things like that. Um, and if you're going to go, you want to let your dog out into the yard um, at night or your cat, turn the lights on first. Give them a minute to scurry away because they're very shy and they really don't want to interact with us at all. Um, so they have really great sense of smell, really great hearing and very poor eyesight. Um, so. That is one of the reasons we see so many collisions because they can't really perceive how far away things are um, and if it's safe to go. So um, they're just really wonderful little neighbors. I know they're very smelly, um, but that's it's just um, it's one of their endearing qualities. <laughs> um, and if you do ever get sprayed by a skunk, um, it is like a sulfur and hydrogen kind of compound, but it's not water soluble. So. Uh, water is not gonna to break it down it is like an oily substance so 3% um, hydrogen peroxide and a little bit of dish soap and some water and you can soak things 
Um, it's safe to bathe your pets in that as long as it's diluted and obviously just not right around their face, things like that, because um, you don't want to get any kind of any kind of chemicals into their eyes. Um, but if anybody has any questions, I can certainly answer them for you. Yeah, Leanne asked how old these ones that we saw were. All right, so the skunks we saw in there, um, they're ranging between probably six weeks up to about eight or nine weeks. Um, the bigger guys are a little bit older, obviously, um, and that big crew of little ones, they would have just started um, coming out of their den. Unfortunately, some of them came in because their mothers were killed or trapped and removed. Um, and they couldn't fend for themselves. So they were just starting to, to come out into the world. That's, that's it for questions right now. If All anyone right. has any more, you should uh, submit them now yeah. while we're around. Oh, Leanne again, when do you release them? Uh, so releasing them, we don't, um, it's, they've got to be over a kilogram um, is the goal. So they've got to be big enough that they can uh, defend themselves and quick enough that they can run away. So they'll stay with us till they're about a kilogram which makes them probably three, four months old by the time they, um, they get released. And, um, and then we try and find safe spaces to release them because skunks are quite territorial. So that's another problem with relocating them um, is if you put them into another skunk's territory, um, they, they often die because they either get starved out or they get attacked. Um, so we make sure they're big enough that they can fend for themselves and they'd stay with mom usually through the first winter and then disperse in the spring. So. Mm -hmm. I think that answers Cody and Cindy's question there. Uh, and Michelle says Jordan wants to know if you ever get sprayed. Oh yes. <laughs> yes, yes we do. Um, when we go in to weigh them, because um, we do weigh them every two or three days just to make sure everybody's getting their fair share of food. Um, and there's not any issues that way. Um, we wear full face shield um, because yes, they, even the little guys, once they hit five or six weeks old, they can start to spray. Um, they don't have the best aim. So um, yeah, we make sure our entire face is covered because uh, that's the, you can, it can cause temporary blindness if you get it in your eyes. So bad. But that's it for questions. Do we have time for Ollie or should we sign off? Yeah, we can go see if he's up. Sure. Uh, so Ollie is our resident skunk. He came here in 2017. Uh, somebody decided they were going to try and keep him as a pet because um, he's adorable and then realized that uh, he's a lot of work. So he was brought to the center. Um, the team here did everything they could to try and get him to spend time with other skunks. And, and become a normal skunk but um, no matter how hard they tried every time somebody went into the room with the skunks Ollie would run over and sit on their feet or hug their legs so he just wasn't appropriate for release mm -hmm. um, so he lives with us year-round he is part of our education program um, so we're gonna go see he's got an outside pen that he hangs out in uh, during the day to get a break from all of the babies. He doesn't share space with them. He just lives in the same building um, But he does have a big pen at um, In the afternoon, so we'll just go see if he's up and about. And Leanne is wondering does Ollie go to classrooms ever? Um, he that was the plan until mighty COVID came along um, So it is the plan that he will he will go to classrooms. He's been descented um, even a descented skunk still has a, an odor um, but his, he, uh, he has been descented um, just for everybody's safety around here. Um, he does still bite. He's still a skunk. Skunks are very unpredictable that way. They can bite very hard. Um, but we'll go see if he wants to, if he's out and about. Hello. Hi, Cody. So inside the buildings, we don't talk when we're around the animals or we talk as little as possible just so they don't get used to the sound of humans. Um, but because Ollie is a program animal, we talk to him all the time. Um, he's just in his little cabin there. Hi, Ollie. Good boy. Oh, I think he's looking for his dinner. <laughs> And see his nose checking everything out. Uh, come on, baby. So, Ollie does have a few trained behaviors that we've been working on, uh, mostly going in and out of his crate. You can see his nice claws there. Uh, skunks are great diggers, um, that's how they find their way into small spaces. Oh, 
and he will, this is his game, he will pretend to spray you because he's being tough. <laughs> Hi, buddy. He's like looking for supper, but yeah, this is, he's a bit small for an adult skunk, but um, yeah, he's our good boy. He's touching. Oh, see, he wants to play. There you go, buddy. Hi. Oh, I left strawberry on my pants. <laughs> So his dinner is over in the other building, I just wasn't sure. <laughs> um, if you do ever find a skunk in a window well at your place, um, the best thing to do, Ollie off, the best thing to do is um, put a board or something in down into the window well so that they can climb out on their own. Um, they don't want to be there any more than you do, especially the little guys. Sometimes they just tumble in during the day when they're out exploring and uh, mom can't get them out that way. So. Leanne wants to know, does he make sounds? He does, yep. He, uh, he grunts, and, grunts and groans. He's gone into his kennel because this is the training that I've worked on with him is great. Um, so he's expecting me to put some food in there, but <laughs> that a boy. Yeah, he's a good boy. But yeah, he does make some sounds. They grunt. They grunt. There is a high kind of pitched, like whiny noise that they make. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, he's he's pretty good for the most part. He also has a tub that we put worms and stuff into, um, full of sand, so. so he's a very playful guy. Um, he likes to have his space to run around. Oh, Ollie, off. Uh, oh, whoop. he's getting pretty rambunctious, so. <laughs> crate, Ollie, crate. Great. I don't know. Now he's off. Now he needs the food. Yeah. Hmm. Alright, so awesome. we'll leave him alone just because he's getting all riled up here. <laughs> yep. Oh. Nice. So we'll see. We'll take him back over to the building. Boy. Supper is served. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> well, thank you, Kyla. Yeah, no, thanks you guys for stopping by. Um, if you do ever have any questions about skunks or other injured or orphaned wildlife, please call the hotline at 403-214-1312. Um, you may have to leave a message. As you can see, we've got lots of babies around this time of year, but we will get back to you um, and answer any questions that you have. Awesome. Thanks, Carla. All right. See you. Yep. So that was our guest for today's June baby shower. Um, we will be back next week, Tuesday at six o'clock. And again, we're not sure who our next guest will be, but we can promise you it'll be another adorable baby as 
you've already met. Uh, last week we did the baby porky pet, which is a baby porcupine. So if you missed that, we definitely recommend tuning in to last week's live stream. Um, he was also very cute and very little. So we thank you again for joining us. Um, and just a reminder that we are a nonprofit here. We are a registered charity. So we do rely on your donations and on the generosity of the public to be running and to be providing the expert compassionate care to the injured and orphaned wildlife that we receive here. So if you are feeling drawn to donate, drawn to um, provide either feed or blankets or um, heating pads, we do have a wish list linked in the caption above. And we also have a link that you can donate directly um, to our organization and to the baby shower. So thank you guys so much for joining us again and um, have a lovely night. See you later.